Let's make the call to the bullpen and bring in Andy Martino. Andy, will we finally get to see J.D. Martinez in the Mets lineup tomorrow night? Yeah, it looks like it's Sal. So, the, uh, obviously, the word out of the Mets in San Francisco at the end of that series was uh, if Martinez comes out of his uh, final uh, game at Syracuse uh, unscathed and if all is good, uh, then he'll be there at City Field on Friday. So uh, what I'm hearing today is that he is not scathed. No scathing at all. <laughs> and he is expected to be uh, in New York as planned. So we've gone from if it goes well to it went well. So uh, see you Friday, GD. Oh, there we go. And Francisco Lindor talked about, you know, the Mets offense not getting to the point where he thinks that they could be. Obviously, with J.D. Martinez in that lineup, they could be even better. So, Will, how do you think the Mets lineup is going to look now with Martinez in it? Well, I have him right behind Pete Alonso. I originally would have had him number four and Alonso third. But Starling Marte has looked fantastic lately. I, I really like what I'm seeing from him. So he's staying at number two for me if I'm Carlos Mendoza. And I still have, of course, J.D. Martinez behind Alonzo. I don't think Alonzo has ever had somebody as good as J.D. Martinez behind him. For me also, though, is that this really extends their lineup. I know it would look a lot better if Francisco Alvarez mm. was healthy. He is not right now. But still, you're moving Brett Beatty down to number six. Uh, at least, right? He may drop down a little bit lower. I don't know. I have him there at number six. I'm asking less of him now, and I think that's important for a young guy who's going to go through some ups and downs still. And I think that's something that's a little bit under the radar is that the, the, the trickle-down effect that it could have on somebody like Beatty, who's still finding his way. Hopefully, from the Mets' perspective, he could be an average offensive player this year, probably be better in the future. But for this year, if he can be an average offensive player and supply some above-average defense like he's been doing, it was a surprise we didn't know we were going to see, but that's what we're seeing and I think JD Martinez's presence helps Beatty and no doubt would help Pete Alonso. You know as you were talking actually it made me think of something different than what I was originally going to say which is uh, the Rangers when they won the World Series last year one of the things that they talked about a ton was the fact that they had brought in Semyon and Seager Marcus Semyon and Corey Seager ahead of time ahead of sort of these rookies getting called up Evan Carter uh, Jenna Heim Josh Smith all those guys and and they won and one of the things that Chris Young the GM of the Rangers talked about constantly over the course of their successful postseason run was that it took the pressure off mm. the younger guys to already have accomplished big leaguers ahead of them in the lineup and so I think that's such a good point coming into this season through the offseason we heard so much about how this is going to be a year for the Mets to see what they have in all of these young guys but they went out and got J.D. Martinez it was a little bit like well how do we square these two things and those things are not necessarily incompatible or mutually exclusive bringing in J.D. Martinez takes pressure off Brett Beatty and it creates a really interesting sort of like mentorship program J.D. Martinez is such a like intellectual hitter he's such a rigorous meticulous guy in his batting practice so I think it could have a really good trickle down effect on the young guys that the Mets will have for a long time could, could also take pressure off of the veterans whether it's sure. Francisco Lindor or sure. Pete Alonso as well look at that lineup you just laid out there that's a pretty solid lineup